Juvenile Xanthrogranuloma The juvenile xanthrogranuloma, JXG is a type of histiocyte, monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells, phagocytes. While the term histiocytes refers to the body's monoclonal cells, such as the macromolecules and macrophages that occur in various tissues of our body, the dendritic cells, monocytes and macrophages belong to a mononuclear system, the phagocytes, in the same way that the human immune system does. Juvenile xanthrogranuloma, JXG is a type of histiocyte monocyte macrophages dendritic cells phagocyte disease that typically affects children, with the head and neck being the most common sites. Most patients with JZG have only cutaneous symptoms, and there is rarely an extracutaneous manifestation that has rarely been observed. JXG typically manifests as spontaneous regressive nodules located on the trunk, scalp, face and extremities. Xanthrogranuloma in juveniles Different classifications have been applied to the lesion, such as disseminated xanthoma, diffuse eruptive histiocytosis and diffuse extracurricular histiolysis. JXG is the most common eiocytic disease in childhood, although its incidence is often underestimated due to the high incidence of spontaneous single lesions. Juvenile xanthrogranuloma, JXG, is primarily a self-inflicted dermatological disease associated with systemic manifestations and rarely associated with it. It does not constitute a metabolic disorder and is not associated with metabolic disorders. JXG is a benign skin disease and can be divided into coarse histiocytic disorders. It is one of the most common types of dermatological diseases in young children. JXG consists of lesions that may occur once or more and appear as slightly elevated papillonodules on the skin surface. Differential diagnoses include benign cephalous histiocytosis, generalized eruptive histiocytosis, GHT, and coarse histiolytic disorders. Bigness cephech, benign cephoidos, affects infants and young children under 3 years of age and tends to present itself as multiple flat lesions, limited to the head and neck and conserving the mucosa. The lesions vary in diameter from 5 mm to 20 mm and are well delimited, firm or rubbery, and differ from smooth pink bumps, which are initially smooth and pink-like bumps, but later develop a yellowish appearance and can become scaly. It is present from birth in 20% of cases and most likely occurs in the first months of life, usually after the birth of the child. Most have a diameter of half a centimeter, but some giant nodules can be up to 2 centimeters in size and in some cases as small as 1 centimeter. It can occur at any point of the body, but is more common in the trunk and upper extremities and appears to resolve spontaneously after treatment. It comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, from small to large, from the upper and lower extremities to the legs and feet. Juvenile Xanthogranulomas The incidence is unknown, but half a percent of childhood tumors have been reported. There is no association between JXG and juvenile myelomonocytic lymphoma, but there is a slight, albeit rare, possible connection. The skin is the most commonly affected area, with a preference for head and neck, and about 8% of cases are multiple. The patients are predominantly male infants. JXG has two clinically significant associations, the first is ocular complications and the second lymphoma. Eye diseases are the most common cause of high femas in infancy, and one to half of all children with the disease have a skin lesion. Eye tumors can manifest in the iris, cornea, retina or other parts of the eye, such as the pupil. Iris is the eye tissue that is most commonly affected, but ophthalmologists, pediatricians, neurologists, Dermatologists and other medical professionals have been involved in the skeletons. When the patients start to exhibit these on their external skin, then it moves into the classification of xanthomas. To explore more on this subject, go to xanthalasmatreatment.com and also xanthal.com.